Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for at fronosphoto.com 11 days. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a comparison slash verse video between the Sony 600 millimeter f4 and the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter f5.6 to 6.3. Now I took both of these lenses out into the real world to get sample images. I used it at the Philadelphia Zoo to photograph gorillas as well as the eagles, not the Philadelphia eagles and not the band, the Hotel California eagles, like actual eagles that were at the zoo. I also took it out to a Trenton Thunder minor league baseball game. They're a double A affiliate of the Yankees. That's why they have pinstripes. Now the whole point of this video is to take similar images that I captured with both of these lenses and put them side by side to see if there's much of a difference. Now there is a major difference when it comes to price. We have a $13,600 F4 right here. And over here yonder, we have a 200 to 600 millimeter f5.6 to 6.3. Now, of course, most people, and by most people, I mean most like all of us, are not gonna be buying this lens. This seems more realistic for somebody who's looking for a 600 millimeter than this, and I'm here to help you decide which one's more versatile, which one's better, which might be the right option for you. Now, speaking of which might be right for you, let's talk about the weight of the lenses. This 600 millimeter F4 weighs in at 6.7 pounds or 3,040 grams. And this right here weighs in at 4.65 pounds or 2,115 grams. Now, before this video, I was thinking that this lens uh, maybe felt lighter because it was spread out more the lenses, you know, across the whole thing balanced better. But now that I pick them up both side by side, it's clearly heavier at 6.7 pounds. But that is to be expected when you have a lens that is this massive. Now, Sony will tell you that this is the world's lightest 600 millimeter. Yeah, sure, by 10 grams, which is nothing that is not very much. Uh, so obviously there's a weight difference. I recommend using a monopod with both of these. You can hand hold this, the optical stabilization in it is very good, but if you are shooting for a long amount of time, I do recommend throwing this onto a monopod because not everybody has gun number one. And gun number two! It even got a little heavy for me, so I ended up with a monopod on this and just handheld this bad boy. Right before I jump into comparing these images side by side, I do wanna let you know that I shot with the Sony A9 because that is the best combination for when you're shooting sports, especially with this massive lens over here. Now you can download sample raw files. The link is up on the screen as well as down below. And at the very end of this video, stick around after I sign off because I'll be showing you a slideshow where the images are mixed up and you can try to determine which images were shot with which lens. Now let's jump into these first two images. So we've got a silverback gorilla here at the Philadelphia Zoo just sitting at a distance. Now I'm zoomed out to 600 millimeters with both of these shots. Now when you zoom in on the eyeballs, they are very similar. They're both at an extreme distance of 600 millimeters. They're both up against the wall. So the difference between 6.3 and F4 in this situation isn't really much different. Now they both have image stabilization, even though I was shooting at a pretty slow shutter speed that wasn't higher than 1 640th of a second, which is a general rule of thumb. You kind of don't want to shoot it at much slower than the focal length of the lens that you're shooting. Even though when I use this 200 to 600 and I saw a whole lot of shake as I was shooting because I was moving, the image stabilization in the camera in combination with in the lens did a fantastic job even when I broke the rules of hand holdability at slower shutter speeds versus the 600 millimeters. Now, when I was looking through the images, uh, going through and just editing them down, I forgot for a second that I shot it with two different lenses, that I, that I used two different lenses out at the zoo. I was like, wait a second, I 
wait, one of these is a 200 to 600, the other's the 600 F4, and I couldn't tell much of a difference when I was going through the images with my initial editing. So that's a good sign for the 200 to 600. Now, now moving on to the Eagle photos, I tried to get pretty similar shots. Now it was a little difficult from switching to one lens to the other. I may have been a foot closer, a foot further apart, but you can just zoom in on the eyeballs on both of these and they are tack freaking sharp. That, I mean, look at, look at the, look at the feathers, birds of a feather flock together, the colors, the tones, of course, a lot of that can happen in post-production, the colors and the tones. And speaking of, I did use a Fro Pack 1 preset called Skittles to give me a great starting point for a lot of these zoo photos, and it made it punchy and vibrant and really good. But again, I'm not seeing much of a difference between both of these lenses in this zoo situation. Let me jump in here real quick and say, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or have a great starting point, we created 14 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out at fronosphoto.com slash presets. Over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you like them, they are 40% off for a limited time. As an example, this photo was edited from FroPack 1. Now let's move out to the ballpark where you're gonna start to see some differences between these lenses. Now look at these two shots. The one on the left is the 600 F4 and the one on the right is the 600, the 200 to 600 zoomed out and giving you 6.3. Oh, by the way, now's a good time to let you know that the 200 to 600 goes to 6.3 at around 301 millimeters, which some people may get a little upset about because I would have thought that it would have stayed five six all the way out to say 500 millimeters, maybe even 450, but it goes to 6.3 at 301 millimeters. So in, for all intents and purposes, it's really a 6.3 lens unless you're in the first 100 millimeter range. Now jumping back to the samples of these two batters in the batter's box, let's show you the differences. Look at the top right hand corners of the stairs. You can see that the stairs are much sharper at 6.3, not, not sharper, but more prevalent. They're right there. They, they come out and they become more of a distraction. Now, when you look at the seats, look at the, the numbers on the seats. Those are the, the roundish things that are actually blowing out on the left. Those are the seat numbers. And on the right image, you can see that they're more pronounced. So things are sharper in the background. Not because I misfocused, because I didn't misfocus. We're tack sharp right on the subject, but it's just showing you the difference between four and six, three. And that's one of the major differences you're gonna see between these lenses. They're both super sharp. They're both super fast when it comes to autofocus. I mean, with the 200 to 600, I snapped off 32 shots in a row of a batter running out of the batter's box and they're all perfectly in focus and that's a good sign for this lens. The 600's just gorgeous. I, I really can't say very much bad about it at this point. But this is something that the pros buy because they want to separate the background more than you would with the 200 to 600. This is the 63 bokeh is amateur bokeh. It it really is in this situation. This is pro ass bokeh. You can quote me on that. The 600 f4 pro ass bokeh. Now we put these two images side by side. We've got a third baseman, we got a shortstop, but we have the same exact background where you can see the New Jersey State Lottery back there. In one, you can basically read what it is, and in the other, you can't read what it is. So again, you're seeing the difference is mostly in the bokeh, but then there's versatility, 200 to 600. Versatile, because you can go from, check this out, you can go from 200 millimeters of this picture right here to 400 millimeters to fill the frame horizontally to 600 millimeters all the way in at 6.3. All of these images are tack freaking sharp, but I had the versatility of being able to shoot it. 200, 400, 600, yeah and everywhere in between if you would like. Now let's compare these two lenses at 600 millimeters with this picture. It is a picture, I almost said picture. It's a picture of a picture, all right? All right, so we got on the left 600 F4, this is the picture. On the right, we have the 600 at 6.3, but these are very similar. Let's zoom in on the eyes. 
super sharp on the 600 F4 and super sharp on the 600 out at 6.3. There's some differences in the noise and the grain that you're gonna see, but also let's look at the background. Look at the, the yellow line on top of the fence. It's more obliterated with the F4 than it is with the 6.3. So that's another thing you're gonna see. It just obliterates the background, and that's the same deepness. I'm sitting behind home plate, so that's about 435 feet away from the center field fence, 425, give or take, uh, and you can just see that it isolates the subject. That's what you're getting when you have a 600 F4 versus a 6.3. So those are the side-by-side -side sample images that I wanted to share with you to show you the differences. Like I said, the autofocus of both of them are fantastic when paired with the Sony A9. I'm sure it's gonna be just as good or pretty close to the same with the A7 III and the A7 R3. There will be subtle differences but between both of these lenses, of course the 600 F4 is much faster in terms of focus, but I really didn't notice terribly too much of a difference when having this lens tracking the subjects. They both did a fantastic job. Now I know that I showed you just comparison photos, but at the very end, after I do the wind tunnel test and the sniff test, you're gonna see that slideshow that I said, so don't forget to take a look at that to see the other images that I captured. And now we've got the wind tunnel test. This looks so cool. I've got like $15,000 in my hands. Do I look cool, Steven? I don't know which passed that one, but let's sniff them both. Ooh, Jello. Jello pudding pops. Okay. So to wrap this bad boy up, who's it for? Who gets this lens on the right and who gets this lens on the left? Well, most people aren't getting the one on the right, it's that simple. The one on the left, highly versatile. If you're a birder, a nature photographer, an outdoor sports photographer in primarily good light, even though you can get away with it at higher ISOs uh, to, to compensate for that 6.3, just know that this isn't meant for super low light situations. You can get away with more at F4 than you can at 6.3, but of course, for $2,000, if you've been looking for a mega zoom lens from Sony, you cannot go wrong with this. Honestly, they're both freaking fantastic. I, I wasn't expecting to say that with the 200 to 600, even though it goes to 6.3 out at 301 millimeters. If I need a versatile lens, say for high school runners doing track outside, you know, running on the grass, not on the track. This is gonna give you the ability to get them crossing the line, to zoom in to, to 600 and try to isolate them. Uh, it's a great option. Honestly, a full-time pro is gonna have both of them, but of course, I can recommend both of them if you can afford it, and really, they're both fantastic lenses. So again, download the sample raw files over on the website. If you'd like to pick up either one of these, head on over to adorama.com slash fro, because when you use those links, it helps us to continue to make the videos that we make. And that's all I have to say. Stick around for the slideshow. Jared Polin, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.